All right. So what is convolution good for? And why are we doing this? It's, so this is, this is all math, right? But there is a fundamental reason behind it that we are, we are doing that. Um, one of the nice uh, uh, use cases of this is image segmentation, where you want to find boundaries of things and, and define where something starts and stops and, and then do things that you can make money with it and uh, sell. So, so it's basically used a lot in, in image segmentation, and we will take the first steps towards doing it here ourselves. What? Oh, it's here. Sorry. Forgot. Yeah, it works. Cool. Um, and usually when you, when you look at it, so the thing that I showed you is done by something called UNIT. And uh, it has an architecture which looks like this. And if you were afraid of this before, you are no longer afraid, and you shouldn't be, because here you have a pooling layer, you have a convolutional layer, say you have a three by three convolution, and you do it twice, and then you have another convolution here, and then you have some dense, uh, dense layers here, so you know everything. You can, now you can look at a, uh, a convolutional neural network, and you can read it, and it, it, it all makes sense to you. And this is something that you have tried, and you will try even more. All right, good? So let's do it. Um, let's pick one example and uh, do a lot of exercises on that to make sure that you can do uh, convolution on two-dimensional images and, or, um, or, or, or a transformation of audio. I keep saying audio because now I know we have a customer for that here. Um, and, uh, and so let's, let's do that. Edge detection is something that convolutions are very good for. And a lot of people have worked on it over many, many years. If you uh, read about it in Wikipedia, you see that people have worked on edge detection using convolution, and the kernels are known by the name of the people who have done it. So opportunities here, if you're <laughs> interested. Because I wanted to show you a real use case in, uh, in the industry. It's, it's an example. I'll show you other, uh, other networks as well. All right, so how do we, how do we find edges in, uh, in images? We go and we look at the, the gradient. This is one way. We look at the gradient of the intensity at every pixel, and we look at where there is a jump in the intensity. And, and that jump gives us a gradient. And that quant quantifies uh, the, the, the edge. Um, what is a gradient? So in the x direction, we change x by one pixel and uh, in, in two directions. And then we subtract them. This is how we computationally uh, compute numerically we compute the the gradient in the x direction and also in the y direction we, we go one step above one step below and we compute the gradient in that direction and that is the value of gradient at x at, at x here and at y for me now I can do that with a convolution see what we have learned we can use it here how do we use a convolution for this. <coughs> Sobel uh, came up with this idea that, uh, so for taking a derivative in the x direction, I will use a kernel that is minus one here, zero in the center, plus one here. So uh, remember the two dimensional thing. I want to compute the uh, the, gradient, the, the gradient at the center 
here, all right? So I go one row above, and I subtract the left pixel from the right pixel, the intensity of the two pixels. And then I do the same thing, one row below, one row below. And then I do something similar on the, the actual row, and I give it a weight of two because it's more important. This is my row that I'm interested in. And I use this in a, as, as the kernel of my, uh, of my convolution. All right, so as I do it, I, I, I take a patch in my image, I compute uh, the differences between, in row, be, between column intensities between and after this point. So if they are exactly the same, if you have an image that is black, the value here and the value here is going to be the same. So that gives me the one minus one, is zero, uh, that, that gives me nothing. If the value on the right side is more, I multiply that bigger number with a positive uh, number and the smaller number with a negative number, and that gives me uh, a non-zero value, all right? So that's my approximation to taking a gradient in the x direction. And I can do the same thing in the y direction. And in the y direction, now I, ha I have rotated this. So I take the above row and uh, subtract it from the below row. And uh, I do it around that pixel. Well, um, so what happens if I have a bigger kernel? Um, then it has a different name. We will talk about it. Um, this is the first approximate, the zeroth approximation to taking a derivative uh, in a two-dimensional image, and Sobel came up with it, and it's known as a Sobel filter. Uh, if I, can you see this? Can I turn the, the light off? All right, so I will describe it to you, what you should see here. That's fine. Oh, thank you. How did you do it? Um, so, so what it does is that, so here I'm taking this, and this is so easy. You will, you will do it in uh, four and a half minutes, and you, you'll see how, it is, how easy this is. Uh, you take the image and uh, you convolve it in two dimensions using Python with this. It takes the derivative in the x direction, which means it is finding uh, edges. It is finding edges that look like this, all right? And uh, this, so when you do that, you will get this picture. And if you see, uh, here I have elongated uh, lines because that's what uh, this operator is doing for me. All right, fantastic. Did you ever think that finding edges was so simple that even I can do it? <laughs> now, I, uh, I take the, 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 the kernel in the y direction the, 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 I take derivatives in the y direction, and I get horizontal edges here. All right? And I combine the two. I go from this to this. Now I have all the edges in my, uh, in my image. Where can I do it? Where can I use it? You are building a self-driving car and you want to find all the cars and people and, and animals and dogs and cows on, on the street, right? Um, the first step would be to find where those boundaries are and then to give them names. That this is a car, this is not a car, this is a human. That's it. All right. So computationally, how do you do it? 
Uh, this is a little nice trick. You multiply this by i, the imaginary, fun uh, the Im imaginary number. In Python, it is called j. And you build a, uh, you, you build a, a, a superposition or a combination of these two. So gx plus iy, uh, gx plus igy. So that gives you one complex uh, kernel. And then you apply it to your image. It gives you a complex result. And you look at the, uh, the mod of that. The, the absolute value of that. Done. That's, uh, so that's, uh, that gives you the combined result in just one line. And we'll see how. All right. Was it fun? Yeah? All right. So let's have even more fun. Now, Char looked at it and said, but this is not, preserve, it's not uh, preserving symmetries on the rotation. And, and we can do better, and started working on kernels that uh, were improvements over that, and came up with these two kernels, and came up with a way to generate these kernels in any dimension. So um, this, is, this is a three by three kernel, but you can uh, gener you, ha you have char filters for uh, operators for, for higher sizes, bigger sizes. And you apply it to this, you get that. You'll do it today in a few minutes. And because we, are, we only care about biomedical imaging applications, uh, we are going to pay, you remember our familiar uh, image? We are going to pick this and then use uh, use Python to detect edges. So the first uh, image that, that the, the first method that we want to use is through Sci SciPy has ND image um, in it, this N dimensional image utilities. And uh, in ND image, you have Sobel as, a, uh, as, as an operator. So you say ND image dot Sobel and you give it the image, it returns the, the edges back for you. All right, so one line. But do you like it? It's lame, right? I mean, someone has done it, we just use it. It's, it's just useless. So let's actually do it ourselves. Um, let's take the two-dimensional uh, kernel in the x direction, you remember the Sobel uh, kernel? And let's define it here in, uh, in NumPy. Then from scipy.signal, we import, we work with scipy.signal.convolve1d. Now we, we work with signal.convolve2d from scipy. And we give it the image. We give it the kernel that we defined here. And I mean, this, this says how, what to do with the boundaries and uh, ignore this part. This is the whole thing. We give it the input image, and we give it the, the kernel. And it returns the convolution result for me. And boom, I get this in really one line of code. So hands on time. Let's do it. Uh, what we will do is that we will read in uh, this image of, retain, uh, of, of, of the eye, and then we will convert it into black and white because we don't want to deal with RGB layers. Uh, that makes it just one layer. And then, oh, I keep forgetting to use this. <laughs> um, and then we define um, our, our kernel, and we use scipy.signal.convolve2d to apply it to our image in, in the x direction. And then we will get this. 
and then we will do it in uh, the y direction. We we'll look at the result, compare the x and the y, and then we combine it using the trick I told you. And And we get that, and I swear there is actual signal here. <laughs> I made it myself. And uh, then we repeat the same thing with the char operator, and we see how it is improved, and, and we, we, we can detect curved um, objects as well. All right, so let's get to it, and we will have, you have the, you have the question, the exercise and the solution in the same cells. So if you want, if, if you want to challenge yourself, don't look at uh, the right-hand side of the equal sign and do it yourself and then compare it with what's, uh, what I've put in there. <laughs>